The new Raspberry Pi Zero 2W is a great single board computer for retro gaming. But at the moment, Retro Pi won't work. So, let's fix that right now. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. If you've just taken delivery of your brand new Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, you might be disappointed to find that RetroPi won't install correctly onto your new board. The new Pi Zero 2 uses a different set of hardware to the original Pi Zero, so the official SD card image has the wrong drivers in place. But don't worry, all is not lost. The Pi Zero 2 uses the same processor cores as a 3B+, so that image is a bit more compatible with it. It also has a newer Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip, and again that does need an updated driver. And the current release version, and that's as of now, November 2021, doesn't include the correct software. But it is present on their weekly builds. So, if you go to the weekly build page, you'll find a list of SD card images. And these are the latest builds of RetroPie that are updated every week. Um, they're not fully tested, so we do have to be aware that there may be some issues, but, but in general they are fine, uh, and they do include the more up-to-date kernel software, which includes the more up-to-date drivers. So from here, you can download the Pi 2 or 3 image, and once you've got hold of that, you then need to burn it onto your SD card. Now, I've actually recently switched from Etcher to using the Raspberry Pi Imager package, which seems to offer a really easy way to create your Pi boot disks. So when you run the Imager, just scroll down to the bottom of the OS list and select the custom option to allow you to use a downloaded image file. So select the RetroPie image you just downloaded and burn that onto your SD card. You now need to boot up the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 board with your new SD card, and then go through the initial RetroPie controller setup. Now once that's all up and running, we need to do a little bit of housekeeping. So selecting the RetroPie menu item will let us run the Raspberry config utility. Now once that opens up, we can select the display option, and then underscan. Uh, and turning this off will remove the black border around the screen, and of course that's if you do actually have one. Then back in the main menu, select the Systems option and Wireless LAN, and you'll first be asked to specify your country. Then you need to enter your wireless network details, and once you've got all that set up, you'll need to reboot the Pi. So at this point you should have a full screen display, and you should be connected to the internet. And you can check this by looking at your network settings in RetroPie. So now we need to run a full system update on the Raspberry Pi to make sure we've got the very latest drivers. So even the weekly RetroPie builds don't have the very latest kernel software, so we can upgrade directly from the Raspberry Pi Foundation repositories. So again, call up the Emulation Station menu by pressing the Start button, and then quit Emulation Station. And this should drop you back into the terminal. So use the sudo apt-get update command, and this will update your package database. Then you can use sudo apt-get full-upgrade, and this will upgrade your Raspberry Pi to the very latest kernel software and drivers. So this is going to take a while to complete, so pop the kettle on and have a cup of tea. Once all the updates have finished, you'll need to reboot. At this point, RetroPie should be up and ready for gaming. All you need to do is to transfer some game ROMs into the ROMs folder in RetroPie, restart Emulation Station, and you're off. But we can squeeze a bit more gaming power out of the new board by overclocking it a bit. Now, I did make a video fully explaining how to do this, so please check out the link uh, and that I'll put down in the description. But for a quick upgrade, I'll show you how to set it up now. So of course, this is totally optional, and I would advise adv adding a heatsink or some other form of cooling to your board before you do this. But it will give you really smooth, full-speed emulation for systems right up to the original PlayStation. 
So quit out of emulation station again to get back to the terminal. Then we need to edit the config.txt file. So type in sudo nano slash boot slash config.txt and that will open up this file in the nano editor. Scroll down to the overclocking section, which will currently be commented out with the hash symbol, and then add the following lines in to set the overclocking. So these settings will run the Raspberry Pi 02 at 1.4 GHz, which of course is up from the standard 1 GHz, and, and, and will also give the memory a little bit of a boost as well. So hit Control X, then Y, and then enter to save the file, and then you need to reboot the Raspberry Pi. Now hopefully everything should boot back up again okay, but if you do find that your system crashes, you'll need to reduce the value above for the ARM frequency setting. So go back and edit the file, try setting it to 1300, which is 1.3 gigahertz, and then reboot to see if that works. If you can't get RetroPie to start at all, then just simply take out the SD card and put it into your main PC. You'll find that you then have two disk drives, one of which is called boot. Now in the root of that, you'll find the config.txt file, which you can then edit with a normal text editor such as Notepad or Atom. Uh, but please don't use a, a full word processor like Microsoft Word. Your Raspberry Pi 02 is now a mini emulation powerhouse. So let's install a couple of high-end PS1 games, um, such as Colony Wars, to see how well it performs. You can download these games from muparadise.me, and I've made a video about how to turn on their broken down download links. So again, check out the description below for a link to that video. So once you've downloaded the ROM archive files, we need to extract the files from that, and then put them onto the SD card on our RetroPie setup. Now the easiest way to do this is to use your network settings to connect to the double backslash RetroPie Samba share, and that actually then connects you directly to the SD card running in your Raspberry Pi. You can then simply um, click, select, and drag the game files from your archive files and then drop them into the PSX folder in the ROM section on the RetroPie card. If you then restart Emulation Station, um, it'll boot back up again and then you'll be able to see your new games fully installed. So simply selecting our PlayStation game, that will boot up our emulator and we're ready to go. Now I've turned on the frame rate display so that we can see how well it's performing. And as you can see, we're getting a full, pretty much 60 frames per second consistently on this um, fairly intensive PlayStation 1 software. And again, if we move from Colony Wars onto Gran Turismo 2, which is another game which pushes the limits of the PlayStation hardware, you can see that our, our Raspberry Pi running in this overclock setting is, is really coping with that very, very well and giving us our full 60 fr frames per second frame rate. So that's your new Raspberry Pi 02W running the full version of RetroPie and giving you access to all the great computers and consoles. So if you find this video useful, do make sure to click the like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Have fun playing with your new Raspberry Pi and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.